Studio. Check. We are live on air. You are listening to the impact blessing the airway. Take the journey into the world of sports, news, entertainment, while embracing the hottest beats on the planet. Rocking the mind, body, and soul. With energy, electricity, and a splash of controversy. Now, without further ado, it's our pleasure to bring to you the biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The SBTV Nation. Boys, the dynamic duel back in the house again. It is Friday. In fact, good Friday to be back. It's yes. the dream here with the Mad Hatter. What is happening? It is a good day to be Friday, dream, and it is good Friday. And good Friday to everybody out there. Hope you are celebrating and chilling because it's Easter weekend. And you know what, man? <sighs> Don't be crazy like me and work all day tomorrow, dream. I got, I'm, gonna, I'm working tomorrow. You don't want to hear about my work. Good. I don't want to hear about my work either, so that's I'll it. Go back with work. Yeah, no <laughs> I doubt. I don't want to hear about, oh, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, oh, man. Work. Struggle. Son. Struggle, kid. Oh, Make bro. America great. Go Make America great again. <laughs> What's up, guys? We are the SBTV Nation. It's the evening time. It's 6 o'clock, and it's probably somewhere... Somewhere along the lines, you drive home if you were working today. But Dream, getting ready for the NBA playoffs tomorrow. But first things first, the NHL playoffs. I, I looked up at the screen and I saw the Washington Caps down 2 nothing right out the gate. And then you saw them win <laughs> right out the gate. <laughs> what a, what a uh, stomach ache that turned out to be, huh? Which was dope. I mean, I didn't say the games was going to be easy. None of my games ever are. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank, say good, welcome to Good Friday, the Good Friday show. You know, I'm not the most religious person in the world, even though I was brought up around religion since I was very, very young. Uh, my parents are very, very, very strict, uh, what I call holy rollers. And I am not. But I never could understand how religion on the day he died, it got termed Good Friday. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of that's kind of got a strange twist to it, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. I mean, like it's good. It's good. good. About, like if I die, don't call it the Good SBT. <laughs> 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 the show might is the dream. The good, the good dream. SBT. Yeah, the good dream. Let's just say. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I never have gotten that, but uh, it, okay, let's uh, we'll, we'll move forward. There's got to be there. some kind of meaning um, behind it. Maybe well, it was I like... guess because his, you know, his death signif- his death for those of you that are into religion signifies uh, him taking on the sins of the world, and it had to happen in order for that to happen. Which, to me, I never understood that neither, because if it's God, it would just be okay. I'm just gonna take away the sins of the world, and that's no. it. Like I would just wake up one day and say, "I had it with the world. Yeah. I'm gonna take away the sins. I don't even that's need it. to go through all this." But that's me. Yeah. That's why they hate me in church. They throw me right out. They're like, "Get out of here," because we're not dealing with you today. Am I reading this correctly, Dream? Aaron Hernandez yes. found not guilty for the double murder case. Um, not guilty. I saw something about it. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't. I don't think that's the whole. That's the whole thing. Are you sure about that? Because it okay, looks like on, it's a pretty I'm, big I'm, story I'm, right I, now, brother. I saw it and I wasn't paying attention, but it says who was serving life sentence for 2013 murder was acquitted in a, in a 2012. I I don't know enough about because there were there were multiple charges so I don't know if this is just or or whatever have you but I mean 
I don't know. So, you know what? Maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow. Let me do some homework on it first before we get into it. Oh, yeah, definitely. So it's the and it's this the attorney is Jose Baez. I guess it's the attorney that got Casey Anthony off. It's the same guy. No doubt. Everybody is calling him right oh, now. Oh, he he's he's the man right now. Everybody they're, they're... who's in trouble. He just put himself on the map. <laughs> oh, man. He, he's getting... Phew. Damn. Guys. No, remember, Hernandez was... There, were, there was a litany of charges for Hernandez. So this could be something something tight that we got rid of, but there's still other charges. So I'm, I, I let, let me do some homework. We'll get back to you on that as far as tomorrow's concern. Yeah, there's all stuff on Twitter right now, guys. They're talking about him beating the charges. Wow, Dream. Interesting. Very interesting how that's all going to work out, huh? Very, so now, very now what? What if, what if he just walks away and says, hey, I'm a free man and I'm innocent, so, uh, you know, NFL needs to sign me, huh? Well. No, I, I believe he's still serving. That's not the, the charge that he's in in, in prison for anyway, though. I, I it, we'll have to get to it. We'll, we'll get. Let, let's do some homework on it first, because I don't want to. I don't want to talk about something that I don't know. Do a little right homework now. on it. I'm and you know what? Get that, okay, first of all, yes. I'm trying to figure out what the hell happened to Chicago Blackhawks last night. Oh, they lost. No goals, dream. What's the deal with the Blackhawks? I don't know what happened to the Blackhawks last night. I think this is one of the cases of, you know, their main scorer is Patrick Kane. Sometimes when you decide, you know, and it looks like the decision of the Predators were, we're not going to let Kane beat us. We're going to put a body on him. We're going to rough him up. We're going to do what we got to do. It. Kane's used to the physicality of the sport, so I don't know. But the Blackhawks really let me down last night. It was a bad spot. For them they gave up one one goal I, I so i can't really scream about their goal we play can't really scream about the defense um taze did his thing and handled his business however i am not i am not happy with their scoring opportunities last night 20 shot 29 shots on goal that's not gonna get it done all right so i got somebody by the name of chris here saying that um this is the nup. This is the double murder in Boston. Remember, they added like another one to him. That's what I said. Yeah, he got. Like I said he had a litany of charges. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he. he so, I guess he's still going to be in jail. So, hey, whatever. Just hey, cleaning up some like some extra some extra stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, just, not that, that. I'm not. I'm listen. I'm not laughing. No, of course not. Just, of course not. I get not it. Funny. Yeah. But I'm just you know. Saying that they're trying to clean up some of this stuff. Um, back to the hockey, which is which is on my mind. Okay, so now I look at the Blackhawks. Twenty nine shots on goal. The Predators. Now, for those of you that don't understand why I really like Chicago and don't like Mon- don't like Nashville in this series, the Predators put twenty shots on goal. Twenty. That's wow, that's that's putrid. Yeah, it is. Still right. won the game. 20 shots on goal. There's no way. And, 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 and luckily, as luck would have it, out of the 20 shots, they were able to get one in. Sick. Well, you hey. think about it. You know what? I'm sure you got a very good spot for the Chicago Blackhawks in the next game, Dream. Well, I have the Blackhawks for this series. They're parlayed with the Washington Capitals. So, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to get too nervous. The only thing that I am going to say, though, is... Fisher, Neil, Subban, uh, Ellis. I mean, Ellis got got involved yesterday, but some of these guys get out there and stop looking for Kane to take over and go earn your K, your keep. I got it. Definitely. And uh, looking at the rest of it here, Dream, I mean, we talked about the Caps and the Maple Leafs, but um, the Anaheim Mighty Ducks beat the Flames. Yeah, the Ducks got it done against the Flames yesterday. Uh, it was an interesting game. Um, they scored on a, it was a it was a power play goal that they scored in the opening seconds, and it kind of you know I, as far as I'm concerned, it took a little bit of the air out of the Flames um, in, in, in that respect. Got it. All right. Well, you know what? Tonight we got a good amount well, of games I, here. What's up? I'm not even done yet. <laughs> 
What are you talking about? Oh yeah. You... <laughs> you're you're cutting in and out, the... man. That's, that's my bad. I can't really hear you that well at times here. It's it's I can't, it's this. This it's, site that it's, we're on now. It's on your end. What are you watching? Internet or internet porn over there? No, I'm not, I'm not watching. Porn. <laughs> it's, it's Don't let me find out that you're like murdering that while you're on the show. <laughs> so I think I could I think I could stop my internet porn for one hour. <laughs> Got pop ups from uh, Candy who's saying that she's gonna come see you. Wow, yeah. interesting. Yeah. All right, so. Anyway, no, man. What I'm saying is yep. the, the Anaheim Ducks really out physical the Calgary Flames last night. Uh, checked them and, uh, and just and just played a physical game. And really, it's it, it's not prototypical of the Ducks to be that physical. Um, Thirty hits. Uh, they were able to manage to take take away the puck five times. Also, the Ducks put 41 shots on goal to the Flames is 32. So. Uh, and I came out last night and a little bit determined and, and, and showed a little bit of moxie as far as them getting it done last night. No doubt. Yeah, I was watching a little bit of the um, the Leafs game, and I, you know what? Soon, it, as soon as they tied it, soon as soon as it was tied two two, Dream, you just knew that the Leafs weren't winning the game. You know what I'm saying? You could just feel the momentum shift in that one with the Caps. Yeah, I uh, I had a feel, a small feel. Well, Obviously, I told you I didn't like the Leafs. Yep. When they when they came out two or nothing, I did like get a minute of, of urgency, and then immediately when I looked, turned back and, and went up, I ran upstairs and came back downstairs. Uh, sure enough, you know the Caps had scored that quick, so the Caps played around with them a little bit. When I saw them get to overtime, I was I wasn't really that worried. Caps Caps hold their composure well, but Toronto did impress me. With the way they came out initially, they did come out with a lot of you know with a lot of stamina. Uh, they looked up for it. They weren't pensive as they had been in games prior. So I was kind of impressed with their start. Got it. Well, you know what, Dream? I'm taking a look at. Uh, are you done with hockey? From like the recap? No, you're not. No, I'm not done with hockey at all. Keep going. My main, my main issue is I also want to talk about. <sighs> I'm gonna go to that. Maple Leaf game again. And the thing I want to look at, guys, when we look at these games, you look at the the shot differential, 44 shots on goal to 37 shots on goal by Toronto. But you look at the hit differential of 52 hits as opposed to 47, and that's letting you know that the Caps are putting it in. (laughs) Right on. You think so? I mean, I was high on them last year. And they punched me in the face. I had them in a, like a lot of parlays too. Dream, you know the Pittsburgh. Uh, Caps will, imp- will so. implode, but not this series. And I expect your next game, game two, to be. I, I expect them to be hellified in this next game because I mean, when you look at the whole body of work of the game, outside of coming out the gate really quick and snuffing them, as far as Toronto's concerned, the Caps were dominant in this game. Got it. Well, you know what? I'm sure all the dog players are going to take a future on. The Leaf stream being down 0 1. I wonder what their odds are now to win the Stanley Cup. I don't know, but I wouldn't <laughs> take the Leafs to win the Stanley Cup right now, brother. Come on, do it because they are plus. Ah, oh, that's it? Plus 5,500. That's not that bad. Forget it. No way. If it was like a minus, you know. If it was like a plus three thirty thousand or something like that, you know, maybe you take a shot, but not at plus fifty five hundred. Dream, you know what I'm saying? It's only fifty five to even, one. Dude, Wait like, till they go down like oh three, <laughs> and then take the, them. Send me your money if yeah. you if you want to take the Maple Leafs. <laughs> right on here, and the odds on favorite right now to win the Stanley Cup is the team they're facing, who is the Washington Capitals, plus four hundred, brother. They're the they're the favorite. I know, and that's based on their. I think that's based on their record. But I'll tell you, Pittsburgh Penguins, dude. And we're gonna get another look at Penguins. And guys, I've gotten a couple of a couple of people have talked to me about the Penguins in regards to their injury. Um, be advised that he has been hurt, but he's he wasn't in last game either. Um, so don't don't get shook. Flurry's 
very capable of handling the goal. He can handle the goal for the Penguins. They're going to be fine with him in goal. Um, don't panic. That, that's Flurry played last game anyway, and he's played this season. He's a def- he, he's he's good to go. Are any of these teams a dark horse? Um, I mean, I'm looking at you know the odds here. It looks like there's a lot of parity here, Dream. There's only one dark horse as far as I'm concerned. And it's who? San Jose Sharks. Plus 1,400? San Jose Sharks, the only dark horse. I, and I don't... I don't. That's your squad. I, I, I don't love them. If they're my squad. I don't love their goal play. I don't like their goal play this year. Um, and, and that's the only reason why I can't go them. But as far as their size, their physicality, their speed, power play, kills, everything you look for in a team all around outside of the goalie. For me. That's why they got the crying Jordan shark. <laughs> shark mouth. <laughs> that That's the best one ever. That is the best one ever. So, hey, what's up, guys? We are the SBTV Nation. I'm sure you're enjoying yourselves just kind of getting ready to do nothing for the next couple of days here. Dream, you got any big plans? What do you What do you do for Easter? I'm not, I told you, I'm not really, I'm not religious at all. I'm sorry, it's not one of my things. Um, and I, 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 I'm, I don't have. No, but you go planned. see the family and stuff, right? <laughs> What's that? No. No. <laughs> all right. Hey, real quick. <laughs> Real You're quick. All over there with palms and, and oils burning. <laughs> wow, interesting. They're going to church for the next three days. You go, you go visit my family right now. They might make you put in, make you give an offering. You have to give them some money in a little in a little envelope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, a couple of notes here from the NFL guys: Marshawn Lynch and the Raiders close in on a deal, but will the Seahawks allow it? What's that mean, Dream? The Seahawks are uh, they have a say in that? I don't know that they do, but maybe they maybe they do. I, I don't I'm not up on that right now, so I can't give you any information about that. It says the Seattle Seattle still owns his rights. Really? <laughs> Whatever. Let's see. Uh reach an agreement pending a trade with the Seahawks. So there'd have to actually be a trade for them to get him. Interesting, huh? Very interesting. You know, I, I knew Marshawn Lynch. At the end of the game, at the end of his, his career, you know, I felt like game left to play. I talked about this on the show too. Yeah. I felt like he had more game left to play, and I felt like that he and the you know Seattle Seahawks organization just did not get along. Yeah, right on. Well, you know what? Now there's gonna. I mean, now he's gonna be kicking and screaming if they don't let him go. <laughs> No doubt. Forget it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's. I, I think they're going to be really, really good if they get him. Because I mean, they they dream. They had a you know. I mean, not they weren't going to beat the Patriots, but they had a you know, they had a pretty good shot to go really far in the playoffs. You they know? had a good shot. My issue with Marshawn Lynch is guys that take off. You know, it, it's a long break. Yep. Come back in. I don't know what kind of role they want to play with him. If they're, if they're trying to use him as the feature back, I don't necessarily know that that's a good look. No, why not? If you got a one-two punch with him, then that that probably works as far as I'm concerned. I think that would work. But if you want to use him as a feature back, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to hand the ball off to him, you know, first and second down, you know, the whole, for, for, throughout the whole game. I don't know about his longevity throughout the whole season after taking a year off and how effective he's going to be, especially what you get towards the later parts of the season. So, I mean, I'm sure that they would, are going to, I mean, these guys are obviously get paid a lot more money than I do to figure out a game plan for Marshawn Lynch, and I'm sure they'll put one into play. Of course, we'll see the season start, and then we'll all be scratching our heads as to why Marshawn Lynch is getting so much work. But... I just don't think as the course of a season wears on for him, who's already been out of football for a year and not conditioned, um, and then to come back and then be, be used as a workhorse, that's not going to be I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be a workhorse because um, Latavius Murray's pretty good, man. You know? And, well, got, and, and the receiving yeah, core is and the receiving core is dope. I mean, between Crabtree and Cooper and, you know, Derek Carr's one of the best quarterbacks, young quarterbacks in the league, so... 
You know, okay, so Crabtree was dope last year. Mm-hmm. I'm not going crazy with Crabtree because I've seen Crabtree not be dope for the majority of his career. That's when you had him on fantasy. No. He wasn't dope, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's just ironic. That's just the way it would right. be. Exactly. That's why you're salty towards him, brother. I know what you're doing. I get it. But you know what? Hey, man, I mean, I, I think there'll be a force to be reckoned with. Right now, before the deal happens, you can get the Raiders at 20 to 1 to win the Super Bowl, brother. Might not be a bad look. Because that's okay. probably going to go to like 15 to 1 once uh, Beast Mode signs with them. So uh, looking at the rest of this here, Dream, there's another thing here. Um, Rowdy Roddy White has retired. Really? Yep. Falcons, former Falcons receiver Roddy White retires from the NFL. He's done. That's it for him, brother. All right. So, guys, we're getting ready to rock here, getting ready for the weekend, and getting ready for the NBA playoffs that start tomorrow. Pretty excited about it. And, uh, Dream, what are you doing for the NBA playoffs tomorrow? You there? Watching the game. Couple Watch. of beers, couple of uh, cigars, watching the games, you know, enjoying them, you know, my yeah. usual. Well, the weather's starting to break a little bit now, man. So you know, I got the kids, so I'm stuck. I'm, well, not stuck, but I got the kids, so it's like I, I, I can't really, uh, I can't really go too crazy. Um, mm-hmm. Even though I, and I've had them. Matter of fact, we've been wearing it out. Went to see the Power Rangers today. Nice. <clears throat> well, we like the Power Rangers. Uh, me, I thought it was okay. I didn't love it, but it wasn't. You know, Power Rangers, by the way, some of you guys might be interested in if you're taking your kids out, whatever. This is probably the last weekend because it's probably going to be out of the movie theater this weekend, especially with the Fast and the Furious, the new movie coming out. But uh, first hour of it was actually pretty good. The second hour, which once they like really get their stuff and put on the silly costumes and jump into the big giant thing, that gets a little bit of a struggle. But the first hour of it is really good. Same, I, I say the same thing about Independence Day, the movie Independence Day. I know it's one of your favorites, Zach. Yep. The first hour of Independence Day is absolutely awesome. The second hour is like dusty. Yeah, got it, man. And, um, you know, I'm looking at this. I guess Murray is a free agent at this point for the Raiders. Yeah, so. Yes, see, that's what I'm saying. If, if they want to let Murray go and bring in Marshawn, that's going to be a problem for me. Yeah, right. Good looks to my man Chris on here. He's really helping me out on uh, the Spreaker thing here. Uh, and Terrence Mack also let me know that. So, I don't know. You know what? I I think the defense needs to be play better, Dream. Because they basically lost some games because of that defense. Not so much offensively. It's just, you know, I think you got to build the defense up a little bit. Because I think they could score at will being the Oakland Raiders. You know? They should have brought in yes. somebody defensively, I think. I think that's a, a better better look for them to be honest with you so i was just going into the nba matchups because dream day you know what you know what's cool is that they start at three o'clock tomorrow we got my boy playing at three o'clock okay cleveland cavaliers are playing the indiana pacers at three o'clock and i gotta be a hundred percent honest with you I think they blow the doors off the Pacers in this game yeah i, really I gotta do. be hundred percent honest <laughs> with you I, I don't really well, you think the Pacers are going to be yeah, in their ass you know, like for like three quarters? I disagree. I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Listen, I don't know what the Cavs want to do. I, I think I think after losing the number one seed, I think they checked out like last week, considering the fact the that Cavs, they lost four in a row. At you know, going to to, to end the season. Phil Jackson wants to coach them. Your boy Ty Lue, kid. Ty Lue. Yeah, no, Ty Lue needs to kick rocks. If Phil Jackson, maybe Phil Jackson could salvage career because he's making himself look like an ass in New York right now. I agree. So maybe he could salvage his career by going to coach another all star, okay? And people will forget about how awful of a job he's doing in New York. Yep, I agree with you on that. Looking at it here, man, I mean, um, there's a couple of other matchups. Obviously, we'll get into these tomorrow, but. My, my initial lean here is uh, the red-hot L.A. Clippers dream. I think they beat Utah in the first game. What, what, what's a lean, son? What's, what's a lean? That? What's a lean? What are you? I think they're going to I think they're gonna beat the Jazz. You know I'm a big proponent of, of this Jazz team, but I like the Clippers to win tomorrow. They showed me something over the last... Slow down with the 
Clippers a little they, bit. They, they put the last week of the season, they showed me a lot. I mean, it went into San Antonio and won. I, I had them money lined in that game. And, I mean, they won seven in a row, you know, ending the season. So I always watch out and am very careful with these defensively sound teams, which the Utah Jazz are. This Clippers team, they've got a lot of flash and moxie and a lot of names, but guys that just have never seemed to act right in playoff situations. Keep that in mind. Remember the Clippers bombed last year against mm-hmm. the Houston Rockets? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I am fully remember that. But you know what? This is their last hurrah. It is their last hurrah. This is I it. This is it. If they don't, if they don't get this thing done, those players are going to be looking to go elsewhere because I think they they've had enough. Because you probably get to a point in your career where you just can't get to the next rung of the ladder. That sucks. You know, I I would I would want to leave too. You know, I would try to just go where I can win. You know what I mean? But. I don't know, Dream. Because you know what? It, what sucks for them is that they make the playoffs and they're and they're good every year. So it's not like they're getting any insane lottery picks or anything like that. You know, just sucks for them. Right. But it does stink for them. Whatever. And San Antonio Spurs are given nine and a half tomorrow to the Memphis Grizzles. I don't like that game. I can see the Spurs winning and not covering. Forget. Uh, it. I can see the Spurs winning and completely covering. Yeah. I, I love. I love. You don't see. You see the Cavs blowing the doors I, off. I think the suck. Cavs will blow. The, I'm not laying the eight and a half, though. I'm just not going to do it. But you don't see the Spurs blowing the door off. Who've been I, I, maybe. You you got to remember something. These are two very, very sound defensive teams, Dream. That's why the, the total is 190. So this could be ugly, nasty matchup. I mean, it, it, I think the Spurs clearly, hands down, are the better team. But and they have a lot more scoring options. I think anybody in the NBA has more scoring options than the Memphis Grizzlies. But uh, this could be I a, think a, the Grizzles a Spurs grind. is an absolutely dreadful matchup for the Grizzlies. <laughs> the Grizzles Spurs reminds me of Celtics Cats. Celtics. The Spurs are built perfectly to, to to murder the Grizzles. Yeah, they are. Absolutely, because you absolutely. know what? When the Grizzles play at like a more like a uh, you know, high flying offense and all that. When they slow you down, it gets you out of your element. The Spurs no love doubt. that. The Spurs love that. So, you know what? And as a matter of fact, I mean, they've, they've shot some pretty good, you know, from the uh, percentages from the three point line, too. I've, I've noticed the Spurs. They've been hitting a lot of threes lately. So, to me, this, this matchup right here isn't even a tune up for the Spurs. This is like just with the doctor order. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little warm up. For them, so and the Toronto Craptors are playing tomorrow. Oh, that's the that's the game. That's I, the ugly I, one. Close your eyes. They're giving seven points, brother. I, the, I don't know. I'm not getting involved <laughs> with that. <laughs> to the Milwaukee Bucks, kid. Wow, that's a lot of points. But anyway, dude, you know what? That's tomorrow, and we got to talk today because I know for a fact you you must have. Revenge on your mind with some of these spots here in, oh in the God. NHL. We got some serious. We got some serious work to do. Today. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> All right, man. This revenge. Let's let's hear it. We the got Empire the Strikes Back. Today. We got the New York Rangers and the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadians are minus one fifty five, under over a five goals. Revenge. What do you think? Hey, that, the Habs are a scary team. What well, this? What's that? This is the only game that I don't like. Oh, okay. All right. This, so. I mean, it's the, it's the only one that I could that I could possibly see the Rangers winning again. Um, I don't think that they will, but I could see them winning again. So this is the only one that I am going to stay away from tonight. I don't like this matchup. I I thought that this was a coin toss between both teams. Uh, both teams honestly remind me of each other a lot. I honestly think. Under five would be my play. Under five. Okay. If I had to play that game, I would go with the under five. Under five. Well, the last game was two to nothing. So there you go. And it seems like the uh, the um, New York Rangers have had four unders in a row come to form. Dream. So hey, good luck I mean, with you that. Look at, you look at the teams; they're built kind of the same. Song goal for both teams. 
which is around the same thing. Uh, I will give the Canadians a little bit more on the physicality standpoint. You know, putting 53 hits up against the Rangers is 45, but pretty much outside of that, it's it, it's it's fairly even. Um, the the Rangers, Nash had three shots to goal, but Nash has been kind of non-existent. We've been looking for Nash to appear in the last two seasons. Right. Still yet to really blow up, which I think it's. It's kind of past, you know, past his prime. You look at Holden, and it looks more like he's that guy that Nash has never turned out, pan out to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then on the flip side, you look at what the, what the, you know, what Carey Price has done. You know, twenty nine saves this season for goal. So you, you got to be worried about that a little bit. But I do think that in the end. Just, there's just these teams are too evenly matched to even make a make a solid goal of it, and I think there's some some easier spots today. Easier spots, I like the sound of that. So pulling it up, and you got the Columbus Blue Jackets at the Pittsburgh Penguins. Pittsburgh minus one fifty five under over is now five and a half. Where you at? All right. I'm taking the Pittsburgh Penguins again. Uh, Pittsburgh was very dominant in their last game. Uh, they know how to play at home. Even though Pittsburgh only put 29 shots up. Wow. Persons to Columbus's 32 shots. You still look at the Penguins and just look at how they how they played this game, and it was just masterful. Uh, anybody that was worried about the goal, I mean the goalie play, Flurry was awesome. Thirty one saves and only gave up one goal. And you look at you know if you look at the Columbus Blue Jackets goalie, who I'm not going to attempt to pronounce his name. You know he had 26 saves. They put a lot less shots through, but the shots were of more quality. So. Pittsburgh, they just got that winning pedigree. I mean, they've got the experience. They've got the names. They were, they won last year. They're looking to repeat. You know, Crosby's a beast. You know, you, you just you expect him to get it going. As he only had one shot on goal last game. I expect him to get a lot more shots. Malkin's out there doing his thing. Three shots on goal as well. I mean, you look at when you go go up and down the Pittsburgh Penguins, there's guys that come out of the woodwork from every position on the ice and just produce. And that's what you expect the pedigree out of a, you know, a championship winning team looking to repeat Columbus. Unfortunately, a lot of speed, a lot of shot. I would expect Pittsburgh to pick up the pace as far as their defense is concerned a little bit today. I don't expect Columbus to get quite as many shots on goal as they got last game, but I still got, I still got the Pittsburgh Penguins winning. All right, sounds good. So moving over to the St. Louis Blues at the Minnesota Wild. Minnesota's minus 200, under over of five. Now, this is an interesting game here as the Blues stole the first game from the Wild in overtime. Uh, we had a lot of success with the Wild throughout this season. The Blues, though, came on and, 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 and was shocking in this game, to be honest with you. I didn't expect the, I didn't expect the Blues to be as potent as they were, even though Jim Rome was a douche hit me up about the Blues. Now, the thing that you got to understand in this particular matchup, though, yeah. when you look at shots on goal, the Wild put 52 shots on goal in comparison to St. Louis Blues is 26. Wow, that's in, that, that's in, that's like double their average. Yeah, it's, it means every time I it means that the St. Louis Blues goalie basically stayed on his head. He was doubling for David Copperfield in his pair in his spare time because he was a magician. That had to be the most frustrating game for a gambler who took the Wild to see all them shots and nothing go in. Oh. Dude, that's pain. Everybody peppered up the goal. Parisi, style Kovala. I mean, they went crazy peppering up this goal. And the goalie, Allen, just stood on his head. 51 saves. I, listen. I think that my man Al is going to have that kind of night tonight. Then I guess go ahead and take St. Louis. But I'm sorry. That, that many shots on goal, you're going to let more than one shot through. No doubt. Well, you know, I mean, the Minnesota average is over three goals a game. So, no, they do, you know, they do. That, that's their thing, you know. I think they need a little bit more work out of their defensive end. I expect them to come out fired up. They got to have a little bit of, of of extra fire. Knowing that the Blackhawks did lose yesterday, too. It's got to get them a little bit going. I expect them to come out absolutely filthy tonight, as my man Hockey Immortal filthy. will put it. And I expect 
the Minnesota Wild to win. This right here, for me, is the five-star play of the evening. I do like the Wild. They are minus 210. And I know that's heavy for some of you guys, especially if you're wasting your money in baseball. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> take a couple of those dollars off the baseball games and get involved with the Minnesota Wild. I don't see the Minnesota Wild dropping two games. Get home game. I love this game. I got the Minnesota Wild very heavy tonight. Minnesota Wild wins this game. Minus um, 200? I got a minus 210. Minus 210. Okay. Buy it down to one. What's it end up being? You buy it down to one, which I may do. Oh, you, you want to play the puck line? Yeah, but get it down to minus one, not minus one. Not, not minus one and a half, minus one. Just to get more value. Yeah, no, I got you. I don't do that. Minus, it's, it makes it minus 120, Dream. Not bad. But you know what? That's actually... A, a, you know what? I think the Wild will win by more than one goal. I think they'll win probably by two, maybe even three goals. I expect the Wild to go ham tonight um, on the Blues. When you look at that disparity in shots, it, that means that the Blues defense is just not holding it down. So I would expect Minnesota to say, look, we're getting the shots. Just keep doing what we're doing. They're going to go in. So that's a great look actually hat so i'm glad you brought that up i may go in and get a little bit of that extra minus 120 take a minus the one not one and a half minus the one well i'll get it done tonight that's it that those are good odds at that at that point minus 120 so uh the last one is the sharks and oilers tonight oilers are minus 135 with an under over five where you at uh, one in the overtime uh in the first game and I like Edmonton a lot. You know, I've been a proponent of the San Jose Sharks, but I did like Edmonton in this series because Edmonton has been very polished, a little bit dusty down the stretch, but polished. Another disparity in shots on goal as you look at the San Jose Sharks, and they had 44 shots on goal to Edmonton's 19. Wow. Edmonton, you will not win games putting up 19 shots. <laughs> it's not happening. Not at all. All right. So, yeah, it sounds like you're uh, taking some home teams tonight, Dream. But I'm going with the home teams. I think Edmonton will straighten their situation out. But here's the thing. Edmonton only puts 19 shots on goal. Game had to go into overtime, No, Edmonton still had the opportunity to win the game with only 19 shots on goal. So that's letting you know they're 19. They were quality. Edmonton did out-physical the San Jose Sharks, though, which is a little bit shocking to me because the Sharks are a big physical team. Edmonton was still able to out-physical them, uh, 49 hits, as opposed to San Jose's 34. So I look for Edmonton to probably get a little bit more, phys- even more physical tonight. Bang those boards a little bit harder. Got to get the shots up into the 25 range. 25 to 30, and you can take this game home. Guys, I know I rode San Jose Sharks the most of this season. I really like this team. They're, they're a young team, but... I'm not sure that Talbot's going to go tonight for the Sharks. Excuse me. Um, Jones is going to go tonight for the Sharks. If they put Dell in, I really, I really like Edmonton. Because I just don't think that, I just don't think the Sharks have the goalie. They need a goalie. Okay. All right. So that's that dream. I'm going to switch it up right now. Did you see the uh, the tweet that was sent to you with this song? With the Mac going? I did. <laughs> <laughs> that dude had me hysterical, man. Oh, it's just it, 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 returning to Mac. It's just some guy just dancing in front of Dream. He did a good job. He was murdering it. That looks like you. That, that looked like you going to the prom or something. He, he was murdered. <laughs> Are you mad? Did it look like you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they could find a white boy dancing to this at some point. And... Like you, he'd just be kind of just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Right on, man. Not dancing at all. Hey, did you get a chance to see the, the the guy that got zapped on the on the plane when they tased him and dragged him out of there? I did not see that. <laughs> Damn, what do you what do you do, kid? Will you live under a bubble or something? Well, I, I'm watching sports, <laughs> uh, unlike you, <laughs> who is a co-host of a sports show. Yet you're watching guys getting tased on a plane. You can't t- everybody saw that. Fast Eddie, thank you for reminding me of that. But uh, they, so so what happens is I, I I guess the flight was overbooked or some other crap or whatever. So the guy was like like elevating his voice, kept getting louder and louder, and they tased him and pulled him out of there. 
<laughs> so they're dragging him out of there, right? His shirt's all up, his stomach's all hanging out, right? So I, I forgot who it was, but I think I think it was Benjamin Rowe. He sent me a video of it with the, with the crying Jordan on him. <laughs> Dude, I, look uh, at, dude. And I look at this guy and I say to myself, like, they know who to pick to tase and pull off the play. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't, notice who they pick to tase and pull off the play. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess there's some big lawsuits now. Oh, I'm sure there are. Of course. What if you got, I could see you getting tased, getting, getting oh, too yeah, loud on a plane. I could. I could definitely oh, okay. see that. You're like, get your hands right. off me. Bop, zzz, done. All right, man. So, Dream, how much baseball have you watched lately? None. None. I thought you were in a fantasy league. Damn, I'm watching my fantasy players, not watching no baseball games. <laughs> well, and right. By the way, I love, I, love, I love Dr. Dan. Dr. Dan wanted to talk about how stellar his, his team was and how he was murdering me last week. And if I played anybody else, I would have I would have won. And by the way, his Super Bowl apparently was beating me as Dan's got the lowest point scored by like over a hundred oh. this week. <laughs> Are you serious? He's in last place. Swear to God, he got like, d- dude. Today he's got like the lowest point scored like in the in the in the two weeks that we've played this this season. Oh wow, interesting. Pairing it up right now with 244 points. The absolute lowest. The absolute Everybody lowest. else is in like the 400, 300 range. And Dizzle's in here with the 244. So I guess his his Super Bowl just was beating me. Yeah, that was his Super Bowl, brother. <laughs> That's exactly what it was, man. So, um, hey, you know what? I mean, you know, people people out there watching it, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's you know, it once, once the basketball and hockey – goes away dream you know it, it people yeah, will be watching it. you know what and and by the way the um the royals did win last night so i was right on with that one dream yeah they won three to one in that game um and looking at it here for the rest of it guys i'm just trying to take a look and see if there's any spots that i like tonight um dream you got it. how about this one arizona and the la dodgers zach granke versus clayton kershaw How's that one? Good, I guess. Good, yeah, great. Great. You got the two teammates who were separated last year that are going against each other here, man. So, um, you know, Granky's Granky's been all right in the desert. So maybe he's getting acclimated with that ballpark dream. Right. So, you know what? He's facing Clayton Kershaw, who got rocked in Coors Field. So... And and you got the Dodgers minus two fifty with an under over of six. I might take a shot with the D backs plus two ten, brother. Why not? Granky? Maybe Kershaw gets rattled a little bit here because I gotta be honest with you, the D backs can hit the ball, so I think I'm gonna take a shot with the dog. You know what? As a matter of fact, Dream, I may get them I think the the most brilliant wager with that game is to get them plus one and a half. I think it's gonna be like even money. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Granky plus the one and a half. Go get it. Yeah. that Because you know what? If they both pitch stellar and it's a two-to-one game, you won. There should no score first inning. Uh, not with the D-backs offense. No way. Uh-uh. Come on. Nope. Now, wait, the Dodgers think Granky, Kershaw's not giving up a score in the first inning. Yeah, you, <laughs> why, watch a, watch a pop. D-back watch, offense might get popping. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Well, we'll see. But uh, plus, plus one and a half, plus one and a half is minus one ten tonight. That's my play. I like that a lot. Um, I'm also looking at Rick Porcello facing the Tampa Bay Rays here, Boston Red Sox, and uh, Chris Archer's on the bump for them. I like the Boston Red Sox minus one twenty three. I think I'm going to get involved with that. Take a look at the lineup first. Make sure I'm not missing anybody, and uh, I'll put that play in as well. You know, that's the other thing about baseball, too, though. Like, like the Yankees in Tampa Bay, the Red Sox in Tampa Bay, the Yankees in the Red Sox. Like, they're going to play like a hundred times this season. Mets Braves, Mets Phillies. Every time you turn around, they're playing each other. Yeah, no doubt. I know. 
I agree. They, I mean, what do they? How many times does each team play each other in the season in the division? It's like too many. Like twenty. Oh. There's got to be like four or five series, right? Got to be. Each, and we're talking about division, division opponents. Um, I can tell you that the Padres faced the Dodgers two, three, four. Five, six <laughs> series. <laughs> six, six series. That's six different times they're going to face each other for 18 games, brother. That's dope, right? 18 <laughs> times, brother. 18 times they play each other. Wow, guys. Hey, you know what, though? Yeah, you know what, Dreams? There's something about. You know, having a beer, so long, having a cigar, so long relaxing. Each other a million times. Yeah, right. So <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be a good one for that, Dizzle tomorrow. That, that makes you want to lock into it just that one more time. Like, yeah, yeah, like, you're right. Right, right, right. Exactly. Like, like after the first four times they played, you just didn't have enough. Of it. You needed like two more. <laughs> <laughs> if it's if it's a if it's a division race, I understand and it's cool. You that's know. Like, but, watch it pass. Eight times. Eighteen. <laughs> Eighteen, Dream. Wow. Eighteen. All right. So that's where I'm at for the MLB. I'm going to take a shot with Granky plus the one and a half runs. I like that at even money. If I can get him at even money, even versus Kershaw, I'm happy with that. Um, and I'm taking a look at the Boston Red Sox to beat the Tampa Biscuit Rays tonight. But that's going to do it for me, bro. Frankie versus Kershaw, no score first inning, minus $150. Ooh. It's in. All right. Put it in. Got it. Okay. All right, man. So what do you got to do? Talk, the account is mad heavy right now. Yeah. <laughs> mad heavy from the, from the March Madness, and I murdered the NBA. So there's a little bit to just sprinkle around uh, and just have a little fun. So 10 o'clock, I'm going to lock into the fastest 15 minutes uh, in <laughs> baseball, which is the most exciting part of baseball to me. I will be in for 15 minutes of action for the Branky Kershaw duel. All right. Sounds good, man. That's a great play. I, I think those are great plays tonight. So, all right, man, let's get our Friday going, Dream. What are you, uh, what are you in the mood to do to close out of here? All right, so guys, this is where we're going to close it out. This is what the play is. This is where the real money's at. That's play money over there. The real money is going to be at the Minnesota Wild, minus 210. Hat talked about at minus one. Would you have that number at minus 120? Uh, yes. Okay. I think the minus one at minus 120 for some of you penny pinchers, you might like that. So I think you could go do that too. I do think the Wild will win by a few goals, Okay. Uh, for those of you that do the if chain, this is what I recommend. So you don't have to put up a whole lot of money. Take the Minnesota Wild in a straight play. Then you could if chain this two-team parlay behind it and put the Edmonton Oilers and the Pittsburgh Penguins in a money line par off of the straight play with the Minnesota Wild. That's what you can do. Or otherwise, just play it how you like. But I do think all three of those win this evening. I like Minnesota Wild. I like the Edmonton Oilers. And I like the Pittsburgh Penguins. All three of them win. If you want to money line parlay that together as well, I think that works. Me personally, I'm vested in the Wild. The two are going to be on the side. And I am going to throw in the no score first inning because I just talked myself into trying to get myself involved in this pitching duel in baseball. So I'll give that a shot. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's retweeted the show. Why are you laughing, Hat? No, it's good, man. Keep keep rocking. Uh, we will get into the basketball tomorrow. I got to, you know, we, we're going to have a couple of ways that we're going to look to want to go tomorrow as far as basketball is concerned. So you guys will want to kick it back with us tomorrow morning as we'll be, you know, ready to ready to start that off. What are we getting on at uh, 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time start? Yes. We'll have Do- is Dr. Dan joining us? I believe so. Okay, Dr. Dan will be joining us for the baseball. He'll give you a, a good look at one of those series that you guys might be wanting to get involved in as this is probably game one of the series that they'll meet. Yes. All right, guys. <laughs> Rick Lopez has talked about taking the Dodgers as far as the series play is concerned. If you want to get involved with that. Guys, the series plays have been kind of solid, you know, as far as, you know, the Dodgers now coming on. Uh, I did like the Yankees in their second series. 
We did talk about the Chicago Cubs in their last series. So we've had a little bit of luck with those series plays. Had Baltimore in the series against the Yankees as well. The series plays have, have been kind of prudent, so you still might want to look there if you're looking for some solid wagering. Uh, and don't want to just play that one game. You might want to look in that direction. Want to thank Molly Graham for retweeting. Robert McFalls, TBW. Rich Raven, West Coast Handicapper, Joseph Del Rosario, my man Irvin, good to see you out there, Irvin. Paul Howard, Jim Rome was a douche, always good to see you, Jim Rome. I know I haven't gotten back to you. Did hit me up with a couple of tidbits about the hockey. Me and Jim Rome are uh, Jim Rome are knee deep in this hockey thing, uh, and he's got a great outlook on it. But I do think the face and home teams strike back with a force. Uh, as a force to be reckoned with this evening. Uh, we got G Rose out there as well. Cash Action Bet, he's knee deep in baseball, guys. You want to hit him up, hit him up. He's a baseball guy. Rick Lopez, he's another knee deep in baseball guy. You can hit him up. Sir Mata, good to see you out there. AB Lent, Fast Eddie 72. The Hockey Immortal, always great to see you. Eddie E as well. Gang, I'm the dream. Always remember who you with. Make the most of each and every day as you cannot get this time back and enjoy this holiday weekend. We won't be on for Easter, but we are on on this good Friday, and we will be back on tomorrow, Saturday. 10 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time. We are going to dive into the NBA. We got four playoff games. The playoffs start tomorrow. We'll be see if you're uh we'll be seeing if you'll be licking your wounds or celebrating, Dream after the hockey tonight. But I, uh, I think his stuff I, sounds pretty good. Well, don't forget, the main majority of the hockey money is on the series. The, 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 the caps. That's it. That's it. Got it. So All as right. long as they win their series, it's going to be a, a nice day as far as hockey is concerned for me. It's just, that, that's the, that's a big parlay game. Uh, I'm going to pick and choose a spot, you know, spot, spot, pick some spots here and there. But the main money has already been put in. So as long as those series come out, it'll clean up any any type of mess that I make. And uh, I'm going to get a Bobby Snow score first thing tonight. We'll be interested to see if LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers decide to show up tomorrow. They're going to win tomorrow. Watch. Okay. All right, guys. We love you to death. Enjoy your weekend and get that money. Let's go.